Hello and welcome to The Business Programme. I'm Liz Hay and today I'm joined by my special guest, Dr. Richard Ladd, co-owner and director of Sharp Reminder. Sharp Reminder are a specialist health and safety business with a unique backstory that Richard is going to share with us today. This inspiring story has influenced many people around the country and abroad and I'm delighted Richard could join us today. Hi Richard. Hi. And welcome to the programme. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to have you. Now, you've got a very distinctive and poignant company name. Can you tell us what inspired you to set up the business and how you decided upon Sharp Reminder? Yeah, I, so I, uh, I had a hand injury, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Very early in my career, I had a hand injury. So uh, it was a minor injury to me. I thought it was yeah. a minor, minor accident, but it turned out to be a life-changing accident. So I've been around hand safety all of my life. Mm-hmm. And in fact, my hand surgeon and I made a, a, a safety video in, in the mid-90s called A Sharp Reminder. So it was a, it was a point in name to, to really get people to focus on your know, hand safety. And I, I took the decision to uh, move into the safety arena to pursue a career in, in safety focused on hand safety to, to really try to help create the safest pair of hands. Mm-hmm. And whilst the business sits obviously very comfortably in the health and safety arena, am I right in thinking you s- the company solely focuses on hand safety? Absolutely. Um, you know there is a huge issue with hand safety. is uh, It's the biggest industrial accident in the world. You know more more than eighty percent of industrial accidents are the hands. If you start to include repetitive strain injury, so we we are focused very much on on hand safety and the journey that that I've personally been on. And, and we focus on risk assessment and, and training. And there is a, there is a big gap in, in that area. So we are just focused on hand safety, yes. Uh, so who would be your target market, Richard? And sort of what opportunities do you especially look for? Yeah, so as, as I say, everybody uses the hands, you know, whether yeah. you're at home or at work, we all use our hands. And everyone thinks of hand safety as, uh, you know, horrendous injuries in a factory. Actually, I've seen really nasty injuries in an office, you know, paper cuts. So mm-hmm. we really focus on everybody that uses the hands and our message is, is really not just about work, you know, what you do at work mm-hmm. and what you do at home are the same things. I, I cut myself in the laboratory on a piece of glass. Uh, mm-hmm. We all have glass in our homes. We all stack our glasses inside yeah. one another. And that actually is quite abrasive and can weaken and damage the glass. So we, we've, we've really focused on big companies, small companies, really education on hand safety. So really our market is anybody that is using the hands and we're finding that a lot of companies now have a, uh, a focus on hand safety. It is the biggest industrial mm-hmm. accident. So uh, we, we, that's our target market. And before your, uh, your own accident, Richard, what sort of training, if any, did you get from your employer about working with um, glass and making sure you use that appropriately? Yeah, it's a really interesting question because I work for a large pharmaceutical company. My mm-hmm. background is I'm a chemist. I started in a, in a laboratory. And the safety records are fantastic in terms of training. You know, you, you know sure. how to use equipment. Uh, what you're not taught is how to store glassware properly, how to transport glassware properly, how to clean glassware. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately through a, what was what it really was, it appeared to me to be a minor injury, mm-hmm. I've kind of learned that glass on glass is abrasive, it can scratch, that weakens glass. When you take glass to a dishwasher, if you think of pubs mm-hmm. and bars, you know, and you look at the way they stack glasses in, in dishwashers, you, you, you're trained to handle glass but you're yeah. not actually trained to, to, to store gas. So certainly the company I work for, the, you know, there was really good on safety in the right. laboratory as you would expect. Yeah. Um, but it was really an education to everybody. You know, my accident really kind of opened everybody's eyes that it's not just the obvious things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So and could your sort of accident have happened to anybody? Literally, was it that sort of a- an absolutely. everyday sort of occurrence? That absolutely. Could go on? Yeah. I, a little piece of glass entered my index finger, and I, it was to, to me it was a minor injury. And yet, forty years later, I've had sixty operations, and I've lost my left arm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people ask me, could that have happened to me? And and it absolutely could. You know, I've met people who've. 
you know, had the obvious injuries, you know, with fights with hover mowers and yeah. spring, um, and to people who've, you know, staple cuts, cuts on cardboard. Yeah, uh, cuts it doesn't have to be power tools or anything. It doesn't have you to know, be power paper tools. And cardboard cuts can be uh, as. Uh, absolutely. As, yeah. Yeah. You know, we've all changed the light bulb. Um, you know, we, we, we think about safety when we change a light bulb because it's hot. Mm. You wrap something around it. Yeah. Um, I met a gentleman that changed it the next day and it was cold. So you, he didn't mm. think about protecting from glass. Mm. And that was probably the most devastating hand injury I, I saw, just from right. a, a light bulb imploding. Gosh, it's good to raise awareness of these yeah. things. Now, I know that you've travelled far and wide um, to get your messages um, out there, uh, and you've been a podium speaker yourself now for 20 years. Um, what sort of ambitions do you have for the business now, and you know, what's your reach like so far? Yeah, so we're, we're working with a number of large companies at yeah. the moment. Um, we're working in the, the food sector, engineering sector, the mm -hmm. pharmaceutical sector. Um, we're starting to broaden... Uh, I've, I've taught, as, as you mentioned, on podium presentations uh, across, across the world at big safety conferences. Yeah. Um, so we're focusing on you know, companies in, in the UK and Europe. We're, okay. we're starting to expand to, to get keynote presentations at some major safety conferences next year. But we, we really have a philosophy that it's not just about large corporate um, giants that, that really yeah. focused on safety we, we're also focused on you know some of the smaller companies that perhaps don't have the same finances as the big companies and so we think there's a corporate responsibility there to try and get some of the smaller companies mm -hmm. involved when we kind of go in and give a talk on hand safety and then follow up with risk assessment and, and appropriate training. Sure. Sure. Um, and if any of our viewers who've listened to your story and so on and maybe concerned about their working environment and um, perhaps been asked to do a job that are a little bit concerned about, what advice would you give to them? What, what should they do? I think if somebody's concerned about their safety to the hands is mm. don't do what they're doing. Um, I think you've got to really take hand safety. You know, your hands are the most complex parts of the human body. There are more moving parts in your hand than any other part of the body and yet it's the, the least protected so you know puncture wounds, cuts, crushing injuries can cause you know quite devastating damage and I've met people who've had the same injury that I've had and walked away with just a cut. I've right. met people who've had you know quite devastating injuries and other people have, have it really is just a matter of luck. Yeah. So I think think about what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, explore other ways if you're not sure and, and actually put the right protection on. You know, it's estimated that 90% of hand injuries could be avoided in the workplace through right. protection. So think about protecting your hands. And yeah. if you're not sure, you know, ask questions, ask yourself questions, ask your supervisor, your manager questions, but, but really take mm. hand safety seriously. And, and if you are unfortunate and have a hand injury, mm. seek the right attention. Sure. And how easy do you think it might be to get the attention of, a, you mentioned there, a supervisor or a manager um, to, to reassess working conditions and perhaps put in the necessary um, protection for staff? Yeah, I, I think every, every, every employer has the responsibility for the safety of yeah. their, their staff and uh, I'm absolutely convinced that um, those safety measures are in place. I think the problem is we're all we're all humans and yeah. we become complacent and if safety gloves aren't comfortable you tend not to wear them. Um, we've been into many facilities and we've done risk assessments and you know the safety official is the first one to almost tell somebody off and reprimand somebody that they've not got the safety gloves on rather than understanding why they've not got them on. So I, I, I absolutely believe you know that all employees uh, take safety uh, very seriously and provide all of the, the measures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more the individuals that take the take the risks, you know, and I think that's that human side of us. It's not going to happen to to me. Yeah, it won't happen to me, but sometimes yeah. it, it absolutely can. Great. Well, thanks for joining us today, Richard. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. And uh, we shall remind her every success in the future Thank as you. well. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's all we have time for on today's show, but I'd like to thank Dr. Richard Ladd of Sharp Reminder for joining me and I'll see you all again next time on The Business Programme.